Okay, so we're here with um, Hans Roslinger. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for accepting the inter this interview. Oh, it's uh, a pleasure. Uh, Roslinger is the co-founder of Gapminder. Very interest. Uh, it's a very interesting association, known for profit association, that used the data we have uh, in a particular and very you know impressive way. Then we will talk about. And he's also professor of global health at the Karolinka Karolinska Institute here in Stockholm. And I would like to speak with you a little bit about. Uh, How's the human, human being doing nowadays? I mean, are we in a good shape or...? Uh, we are not in a good shape, but we are going in the right direction. Yeah? And by solving some problem, we are creating new ones. We are solving gradually the problem of poverty and ignorance and disease. So we are getting more healthy, we are going more years to school, and we are getting better and better lives. But we are putting a burden on the environment. So, you know, it's not possible for the humanity to live better if the environment gets worse. We are on, on a way of improving life, but the problem is that some part of humanity has already even a better life than they need. Okay. And yeah. others hasn't changed for the last 200 years, but most are somewhere in between. Some people, you know, the West, uh, like let's call it the West, uh, consume something like 25, 26 more resources than, you know, the poorest country. And this is something that probably have to be solved somehow. Uh, what you mean with West is probably high income countries, richest countries. Yeah. Often we don't want to say rich. We want to call it West or something else. But, you know, Western culture is also Russia. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And 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 uh, rich countries are also Japan today, Arab countries, you know. So so it's the richest countries are actually 100 fold richer than the poorest countries. Wow, that's huge. Yes. It's yeah. huge. It's 100 fold difference in income between the very poorest countries in the world and the richest countries in the world. It's impossible to continue to live with these differences. Right. Why? Y because we will get too many Al-Qaeda's and pirates and diseases. Uh -huh. Well, but it's also possible to live with the Al-Qaeda. I mean, some people, you know, I'm yes, trying to be... Yes, but because it's just a small start, what you have seen. Okay. Just a small start of what you have seen. Because the, the huge inequities which we have within India today, India, no, it's not possible to have. They are going to solve it. China has to solve the inequities within China. And with this world where everyone now get connected to each other, it's not like we can let people in Somalia remain poor. They are on the mobile cell phone internet. We will have the criminal organizations will move out of Europe and out of Balkan and they will settle in Somalia. The whole idea that we have learned that they cannot live like us. Um, this is what Sweden students used to tell me. Yeah. They cannot live like us, that would never work. And then they used to add, all Chinese cannot have a car. And it's very strange that just this year, China bought Volvo. <laughs> yeah. And the Swedes wow. they got very, very, very uh, surprised that this happened. So what we are seeing now is that the middle of mankind, we are 7 billion people today, 7 billion. Eh? Of these two live in deep poverty. And one here is very rich. But these four here, they live somewhere in between. And we will be two more billion. We will be nine billion people until population growth can stop in 40 years from now. Yeah. And if we leave two to four billion in deep poverty, it will be a very unstable world because we also need all the resources. Africa has an enormous economic growth at present. Africa will be a part of the world economy now. It was like outside world economy in the 1990s, in the beginning of 2000. I agree that the West is no longer, you know, the, the, the leading part of the world from an economical point of view. You know, but, but if, if you think about innovation, creativity and other, you know, something like also culture and so on, uh, do you think that the West still exists? It exists as a mental model and a way of looking at it. Of course, we have institutions in Europe which are very good. The independence of universities, you know, the functioning stock markets, you know, that is our strength. But we can't even keep the budgets now. Yeah, that's right. That's and right. to me, to me, I think it's embarrassing to note that the Communist Party in China 
is more seriously investing in green technology than the democracy of West Europe. Just realizing what West is, you know, is uh, we have to define who is part of it, who is Poland part of it? Uh, is Poland West? Well, Poland is a big country. Yeah, right? I'll, I'll, say, I'll say yes. Yes. You know? So, next question <coughs> is Russia West? I would say definitely yes. So you In perspective. Would, yeah. Kazakhstan? A little bit less. <laughs> uh, Iran? Uh-huh. Uh, Iran, definitely not now, but for political reasons, probably. You know. Yes. So you see that there is no dichotomy. Look at my world map. This is my world map. Yeah. Okay. You see, I have all the bubbles here of the countries of the world. Yes. And instead of north and south, I have healthy and sick. Okay. Long life, short life. And instead of uh, west and east, I have poor and rich. So here we have Congo and Afghanistan, poor and sick countries, short life, low income. Up here, we have countries which are healthy and rich, Japan, United States, you find Italy there. Uh, yeah. Italy, surprisingly healthy in relation to income. The diet is good in Italy. Yep. You, uh, you, yep. are, you have a quite good life expectancy in Italy uh, compared to your income. United States is worse in health than Italy. There's countries all the way. So instead of saying rich and poor, West and the rest, let's accept that it's a continuum today. So according to your view, for egoistic reason, we should help these people to, to, to come up to our level, right? It's enough if we don't stop them. We should help people who have an earthquake. We should help people who have a war. All right, okay. For the rest, we should invest. Okay. We invest in a better future. We invest in a stable world. We invest in new customers for our export product. And I consider development aid an investment, a long-term investment. Africa is part of the world today. Yeah. It has happened over the last 10 years. It has partly happened by market mechanisms. It has partly happened through aid on education and health, and mainly it has happened because African countries are getting together and people are working harder and harder, and they are moving. Do you see that, that the, the way European Union is, is enlarging? I mean, by helping close places to, to grow and then to get in, is it a good way, or you know, how do you judge Yeah, it? I think European Union is an exercise okay. for us to become members of the world. Yeah, huh? I like we that. first yeah. exercise, you know, in Sweden, you know, to join Italy was sort of difficult for the Swedes. Italians, no, they are Catholics. Yeah. Can we join them? Yeah. Huh? They are not innovative. Oh, they had Galilee and Da Vinci. Yeah, I forgot that, oh, yeah. you know. And they had uh, electricity and all these great innovation from Italy and their skill in art. Yeah. No, it's nice to join the Italians, yeah. you know. You didn't do it completely because the euro is not here. Uh, yeah. No, you see, yeah. this tendency that Sweden had, now we are a little richy, we don't want to... Personally, I voted in favor okay. of the euro, right. Right? Yeah. but the majority voted against. Yeah. For so, the moment. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what we are doing now is that we are doing an exercise in Europe that says unity and more trade and exchange is better than war. What happened to the middle class? I mean, is there still a middle class? Probably it's getting bigger and bigger. Yes, it is. This was the world in 1970. Huh? One dollar a day, ten dollar a day, hundred dollar a day. Okay. And this is the population. There were a hump. Those were the richer part of the world. That was the poorer part. Okay. Of a lot of poor, right? Huh? Yeah. Two billion, one billion. You know. And what has happened is really that the world has got a middle class. Look, this is what has happened. Yeah, yeah. More people was in in the middle, right in the middle. Yeah. We have about three, four billion people now who live on three to four dollars a day. Yeah. And they are coming right into the world economy. Yeah, and the South Asia is huge. I mean, it's yeah. a big part China of that. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, still in Europe and North America, people feel like the others catching up. Yeah. But the real challenge is that North America and Europe has to reintegrate into the world. And I say that the problem with these richest countries up here, they don't know where they are going. So thank you very much for thank your you time. Thank you very much. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.